Welcome to RS Electrotech. In today's video, an induction cooker will be prepared step by step. What to learn to learn how to troubleshoot your own cooker. Don't forget to subscribe and support the channel for more useful tutorials. I'm going to plug it in. And check for power at the display. Nothing shows, no light, no sign of light. So I'm going to open the case and inspect the internal connections. You can see the power cable connection on the circuit board is completely burnt. This is open the first region why induction cooker failed to power on. The cable is removed and tested using a multimeter. The cable itself is fine, but since the board connection was damaged, It's reattached and soldered properly. Once connected again, the cooker is tested but still no power appears on the display. That means the problem lies deeper inside. Next, the fuse is checked. It is a 250 volt 10 ampere fuse but this one is burnt and not passing any current. A new fuse of the same rating is soldered carefully into place. The circuit is then tested with the switch bulb. The bulb glows 
which confirmed there is still a short circuit somewhere inside the board. Each part is now checked one by one. The bridge rectifier is inspected and found okay. Attention then shift the IGBT transistor, which is not giving any output signal and must be replaced. Several registers are tested, most are fine. But this one is loose and not making proper contact. Burnt capacitor is also found. It is blasted. So it must be replaced. coil is damaged as well uh, with its coating falling off. A replacement coil is taken from an old cooker and installed.
Powering on again, let's discuss some error codes. When I power the cooker for a test, it shows an E0 error. E0 commonly appears if a critical capacitor is broken. Sometimes E0 also appears if no pot is placed on the cooker. Now I'm going to explain E3. E3 means uh, the sensor or temperature feedback is not working. If E3 appears, we check the sensor with a multimeter and reattach it securely. If there's no power, always check these resistors. A bad resistor can stop the power flow. I also check the control IC. Uh, the model of this IC is CSC7222. Because in some cases, a bad IC prevent power distribution. I'll test the IC and replace it if needed. Now I'm ready to reassemble. First I replace the blown capacitor and the damage inductor. With the spare parts I solder each component neatly making sure each joint is clean and solid. I tighten any loose resistor connection and recheck them with the multimeter for good continuity. Next I reattach the control panel and display and I firmly soldered the power cable joints that was previously burned. I covered the solder joints with insulation were needed and double check that no bare wire is touching other parts everything looks neat and secure now i close the casing and tighten all case screws properly for safety i keep my hands clear and i use insulated tools I plug the inductor cooker in and I place a pot on the hob, pour some water into it and switch the cooker to boil. The cooker heats up, the water warms and the unit runs normally. This confirms the repair is successful. The cooker is now tested with a pot of water. No error codes appear and the water starts heating properly. The induction cooker is now fully fired and working like new. If this tutorial was helpful, please like the video, drop your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to our Selectrotech for more electronics repair and troubleshooting guides.